But once we realized what? that the virus was not spread by droplets and was aerosolized, right. did you feel an indication to go back to the CDC and said, let's base this on science? Ain't nothing changed, nothing new here to see. This ain't nothing but some political maneuvering. America! Welcome to the eulogy, eat it up. It's called political buffoonery. So if they get up and criticize science, nobody's going to know what they're talking about. But if they get up and really aim their bullets at Tony Fauci, well, people could recognize there's a person there. So it's easy to criticize, but they're really criticizing science because I represent science. Has a more audacious statement ever been uttered in the history of humankind? Hey there, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Dumb democracy where we showcase some of the dumbest newsmakers of the week. You just heard from Dr. Anthony Fauci, the science, as it were, the embodiment of science. Questioning him is questioning the science because he represents the science, TM. Dr. Fauci was once again before a committee hearing to justify and answer questions concerning his role in the COVID rollout and treatment, vaccines and all that, but more importantly, some of the decisions made during COVID that now in hindsight are not exactly adding up to the science. We're going to get into an exchange between Dr. Fauci and another doctor sitting on the committee, but before we get to all that, please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other shows, and if you like what you're seeing here in this or any other video on this channel, you know what to do already. You got to smash that thumbs up button, like, comment, share the show with your friends, all that really, really good stuff, because all that feeds the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for helping to grow the channel. You know how much I really, really appreciate that. And by the way, special shout out to everybody on Rumble watching. I so appreciate you guys growing the channel there as well. I don't shout you guys out as much as I should. I'm going to start changing that from now on. But for all you newbies, especially on YouTube, I hope this video earns your subscription as we're on the road to 2,000 subscribers. We're less than 50 away. We need your help to get there. Please be one of those 50 on YouTube to subscribe to the channel as we discuss Dr. Fauci's testimony concerning social distancing and the management of his agency and what was going on that he's claiming he has no responsibility for, that he claims were aberrations, but really. People who know science and people who know bullshit are saying otherwise. Before we get to the committee testimony from Dr. Fauci, just a quick statement here to cover my ass. I am a jurist doctor. I am a lawyer. I am not a medical doctor. I have no medical knowledge whatsoever. So I'm going to be listening to this testimony as a lay person. Nothing here should be considered medical advice. Don't accept medical advice from a YouTuber or anything like that. That's just dumb. I'm going to be commentating on political ramifications. I may have some lay opinions on science, but my opinions don't mean squat on that. I encourage you to speak to your own doctors for your own treatment, for your own lives, and don't take any advice from me on that. Everybody got that? All that being said, we're going to listen to the questioning of Dr. Fauci by another doctor. Dr. John Joyce from the great state of Pennsylvania, a Republican who's also a physician, who is trained at Johns Hopkins. He's going to be questioning Dr. Fauci, not from a grandstanding perspective, like Marjorie Taylor Greene would be doing, or some of the other headline grabbing stuff that you see on the Twitters or the social media or the X, whatever they call it now these days. But this is going to be a pointed examination by an expert towards another quote unquote expert. Let's get down to what Dr. Joyce has to question Dr. Fauci about. Thank you, Chairman Winstrup, uh, for convening this important hearing, and thank you, Dr. Fauci, for testifying. Dr. Fauci, one of the controversial regulations of the pandemic was the six-foot distancing rule. This rule became an important policy consideration in subsequent regulations. However, you testified recently, and I'm quoting, this six-foot rule sort of just appeared. Do you think that a role that sort of just appeared is substantial justification for the regulations that we saw based on that six foot role? That's a great question. 
So you see Dr. Joyce already coming out swinging about Dr. Fauci's statements concerning the social distancing rule, the six-foot rule that we all had to live with during the pandemic era. You guys remember all that, all the arrows on the ground. You can only enter an aisle in the store from a certain direction. One left, one right in alternating fashion and all that. Don't remind me. I'm sure you guys remember it and hate it just as much as I did when all that was going on. But we were told it was part of following the science, TM, coming from the man that's representing the science. But it turns out Dr. Fauci apparently just picked this out of the air or something like that. or did someone else pick it out of the air and Fauci just ran with it? Let's see. Congressman, thank you for that question. I, I answered that, but I'll summarize it briefly for you. When saying it just appeared, it came from the CDC. Okay, you stated that earlier. What was your relationship with the CDC when you saw a regulation which was not based in the current science? Well, when I say was not based in science, I meant a pro prospective clinical trial to determine whether six foot was better than three was better than 10. But once we realized what? that the virus was not spread by droplets and was aerosolized, right. did you feel an indication to go back to the CDC and said, let's base this on science. Let's get rid of this six foot rule. This six foot rule crippled businesses. Right. It allowed students to stay at home and not learn. Americans suffered. And that suffering continues because the fracture of trust in American scientists continues to this day. Did you not feel an obligation for something that just sort of appeared? Not to go back to the CDC and say, let's base this on what we know. Got you on the ropes now. This is phenomenal from Dr. Joyce. We've been talking about this breakdown of faith in the science that came out of COVID and the COVID era. It's real today to this day. People are questioning everything. And by the way, I think questioning everything to an extent is a very good thing. I think people should try to get as much knowledge as they can and not just take things at face value. That said, the man embodying the science TM, Dr. Fauci, just seem to accept at face value what the CDC was saying about social distancing at six feet. And in doing so, did not apply the scientific method, did not test and probe and experiment and hypothesize what this actually meant, especially when more knowledge came in about the virus, about COVID-19, how it was not spread through droplets, but spread through the air. Based upon that knowledge, the science, TM, changed. So why didn't Dr. Fauci urge going along with the science, following the data, and going back to the CDC, who, by the way, were part of this coronavirus task force that he was heading up, why didn't he go back to them and say, you know what? The science, TM, has changed, and therefore we must change with it. Why didn't he do that? Let's get this answer from him, because if he is the science, he should be able to tell us why he didn't follow the science. The CDC decision, and it was clear. Were you dialoguing with the CDC? Excuse me? Were you in communication with the CDC? CDC was part of the coronavirus response team. Yeah. And you didn't feel an obligation to go to them and say, look, Americans aren't going to trust us. Yeah. We're providing them with misinformation. We have discussions at the White House about that. We did, but the CDC's decision and was their decision to make, and they made it. So which is he now? Is he the science TM or the bureaucrat TM? Dr. Fauci likes to switch these hats on and off. It's the agenda gymnastics that he does constantly. I wasn't in charge of the CDC. I can't tell them what to do regarding social distancing. I'm only the head of the task force that is implementing these rules. These sort of agenda gymnastics is exactly what I talk about in my book, Schnooks, Crooks, Lies, and Scoundrels, a field guide to identifying political buffoons, available right now on Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, and other online bookstores. Dr. Fauci loves to be the glory hound. He loves to be the guy who gets all the credit when things go right. But when things go wrong, he deflects, he maneuvers, he puts himself out of it. It wasn't my fault that social distancing was six feet. That was established by the CDC. And even when the science changed, 
the CDC didn't change, but oops, I'm not in the CDC. Therefore, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm just a bureaucrat running an organization, running a task force. They're the CDC. I can't interfere with that. Do you see these games that are being played by him? This is probably the most important distinction that can be made about Dr. Fauci. It's actually going to stick from this hearing. Not Marjorie Taylor Greene's grandstanding, not the Democrats' softball questions, but this, a doctor questioning another doctor about why he didn't follow the science after he claimed to represent and embody it. This is great stuff from Congressman Joyce, Dr. Joyce. Tremendous, tremendous line of questioning here. And you didn't feel an obligation as the lead scientist at the NIH to challenge that. I've challenged the CDC multiple times. Publicly on this regard? Excuse me? Publicly you challenged them on the six-foot distance it, rule? It is not appropriate to be publicly challenging a sister organization. Do you agree? Wait a minute here. I got to call BS on this. How many times did Fauci challenge and call out publicly anyone else who wasn't following the science? What makes the CDC any different than anyone else confronting the science during the COVID-19 pandemic era? Why didn't he do that? He was doing it with everyone else. He did it with uh, Joe Rogan's choice of drugs that I'm not going to mention on here because I don't want to get demonetized. He didn't talk about it with alternative treatments that were out there, such as natural immunity that was discussed. Why didn't he confront the CDC as much as he was confronting Joe Rogan and other doctors who were banned on social media, by the way, for suggesting science that was contrary to the science? That Americans now have lost their trust in science, in lead science from government because of misinformation like this. Well, I, you know, when you talk about misinformation, I think that you have to be careful. It, it's not disinformation. It was information that ultimately proved when you put the aerosolization in that, that it was not an effective role to have six right. four feet of distancing. And he just let it go on for months, even years, talking about social distancing six feet apart. It's ingrained in our brains. This is not science, and he claims it's not misinformation, disinformation. Did you see the word game that he was trying to play there? Fauci, at the end of the day, is just like any other bureaucrat out there who is trying to maneuver and control and contort his way to a specified goal. And he's even worse in the sense because he's trying to take all the glory, all the credit. He loves himself. You can tell by the way he's speaking here that he is the authority. He's the science. We've been saying it over and over again. But anything that went wrong, that wasn't him. Typical bureaucrat mentality. And when we come back after the break, let's talk about Fauci the bureaucrat and what was going on in his agency, in his departments, right under his nose, that apparently he didn't know about, wasn't a part of, and is blaming everyone but himself for. Like what you see so far? Go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Also, leave us a comment and tell us what you're thinking. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another show. Dr. Fauci, let's move on. On April 21st, Dr. Morins wrote to Dr. Dasik in an email that there is no worry about FOIAs. I can either send stuff to Tony on his private Gmail, hand it to him at work, or at his house. He is too smart to let colleagues send him stuff that could cause trouble. That doesn't sound shady at all. Do you realize that this impact still considers today? Do you, this is your lead trusted researcher who works with you, your advisor. Do you realize the impact of that? Now, what Congressman Joyce, what Dr. Joyce is referring to here is this Dr. Morins at HHS or NIH or NIAID, one of those alphabet organizations that were involved with the Coronavirus Task Force, Speaking with Dr. Dasik, who was one of the people I, I believe received a grant from one of those health alphabet organizations that eventually found its way to the Wuhan lab where people believe the coronavirus was first created as opposed to naturally evolved. There's a whole dispute about that. I'm not taking a position on that either way. This is for you, YouTube. I'm not taking a position on that. But I want to point out who the players are here. So Dr. Morins was talking to Dasik saying, 
we can get things to Dr. Fauci through non-regular channels that would not be discoverable based upon a Freedom of Information Act request. They wouldn't be official communications. Therefore, you can speak a little more freely when it comes to what you want to communicate to Dr. Fauci. Morins is seemingly acting like a middleman to try to get around government protocols. This is supposed to be Fauci's advisor, his researcher, one of the people he relies on in these agencies, and he's looking to circumvent basic governmental operations and record-keeping here. What does Fauci have to say about this? It was a terrible thing. It was wrong, and it was inappropriate. Thank you. I think, we, said I think we all agree it was incredibly inappropriate. Recently, in an op-ed that Senator Roger Marshall published just yesterday, he raised concern about HHS FOIA compliance following your testimony in front of the Senate Help Committee. Dr. Fauci, what involvement did you have in HHS not responding to FOIA request following your testimony in the Senate in 2021? I had no role whatsoever in anything to do with the request. When FOIA is made, it doesn't go directly to a person like me. It goes to a department which then takes care of it. So I don't have any role one way or the other in FOIA. Yes, yes, we all know that you're much, much too important to deal with FOIA requests. That's what FOIA officers are for at different departments and all that. We get that. But that's not what was really being asked. What was being asked here is the circumvention of FOIA. What role did you have in that? Notice how he's deflecting once again. It's not anything good that he can take credit for. It's not anything that the science should think about, really. This is menial, bureaucratic, governmental nonsense. Dr. Morins was handling all that for him, apparently, and showing how you can get around that and get to Fauci without the official channels knowing about it, and therefore it's not discoverable. Kind of despicable, don't you think? What would there be to hide? I guess you have to ask Dr. Morins that, because Fauci doesn't know. But this is the theme with Fauci. He's a glory hound. Everything good is credited to him. Everything bad is done by somebody else, and they're to blame for it. Except for the fact that he's the head of what's going on with everything. So the buck only stops with him for good things. Let's go on. Were you aware that NIAD employees conducting official work on unofficial emails and inappropriately assisting grantees during your time as a director? I was not aware of that as it was occurring. It obviously came out during the, commission, the, the committee hearings, but I was not aware of that. And I think that occurring. you put an exclamation point on how important these hearings are. Dr. Fauci, would you agree that this demonstrates the need for more accountability and increased oversight of NIAD? Yeah, you think? Absolutely. This is a no-brainer. If Dr. Fauci was allowing these things to happen under his nose, or if he was just ignorant of these things going on under his nose, it's poor management. The science was not managing the science properly. If all these communications were going on under his nose, on unofficial email accounts, that may be at a high level of confidence in the government, or maybe even top secret. I don't know if there's such a thing as top secret health information, but certainly the, there would be information that would not be for public consumption that could possibly be hacked from one of these emails or something like that. Dr. Fauci is responsible for the handling of the people at NIAID, NIAID, so why isn't he making sure that they're working within accepted governmental parameters, accepted standard parameters in NIAID? Where was he? Was he asleep at the wheel? Or was he too busy going on talk shows talking about how he is the science and how his word is authority and law? It's greater than law. It's the word of Fauci. How is it that he was allowing that to happen while he was stepping out in front saying everything about six-foot distancing and everything that ended up being inaccurate here. This is a crisis of confidence. This is the source of the crisis of confidence. The bureaucrat, Anthony Fauci, failed our government and failed our people. Is this the face of abject failure? What you saw, I believe, with Dr. Morins was an aberrancy and an outlier. The individuals at the NIH and NIAID are of a very committed group of individuals. And this one instance that you point out is an aberrancy and an outlier. That 
This one instance is an aberration, except it was during the biggest health crisis in our nation in at least a hundred years. So we only got it wrong this time, and it happened to be the most important time in modern history. You had one job. But we don't need any additional oversight. It was just, it's an outlier. Again, deflecting from the responsibility of when things go bad. This is Fauci. This is one of the most arrogant and audacious people I can think of ever seeing at these hearings. He wants you to believe that all good things flowed from him and all bad things from someone else. It doesn't work like that. It's not possible. This is how I know that he's not being genuine. There's no ring of truth to a situation or an agency for that matter where one person is doing everything 100% right all the time following the science, except when he's not following the science. And then at the same time, other people are working in the shadows to circumvent the people's right to know things, the record keeping of the government for review and analysis by co-equal branches of government. It doesn't happen that way. There's no ring of truth here. There's a ring of abject buffoonery here. The avoidance of truth. That's what's going on here with Fauci. Does From your be- senior advisor for 20 years. When he was with, when the title is senior advisor. We wrote scientific papers together. He didn't advise me, as I mentioned. Are your senior advisors not trusted staff? I mean, I hardly know the guy. Again, I told you that his title was senior advisor, but he is not an advisor. You gotta be kidding me here. So now the guy is not even a senior advisor. Forget about his job title. The job title doesn't mean nothing according to Fauci. He's not an advisor to me. I am the science. No one advises me. Completely buffoonish. You see what I'm saying now about avoiding and deflecting from anything negative? Now the guy's not even an advisor. Dr. Morens is not even a senior advisor. Is he an advisor at all? Completely and utterly ridiculous. This is trash from Fauci. On policy, he That's writes... That's very confusing science. to have someone's title right. and not having that to be their obligation. But that work. is the fact, though. I think that, that... Well, that is the fact, though. The man is the most pedantic buffoon I've ever seen in my life. Everything he says is the fact. And how dare you question him when he says the fact. Completely, utterly ridiculous. The agenda gymnastics here is just off the chart. Dr. Fauci has a very, very high opinion of himself. You see that. Everything he says is fact. Everything he says is the science. Except when it's not the science. And when it's not the science, there's someone else to blame for it. The CDC said six foot distancing. He didn't say it, although the record will reflect that he was saying that everywhere during the pandemic. And then when the science changed and we learned that the virus was aerosol and not transmitted through droplets, he didn't go back and base any new decisions on the science. He just let the CDC go on its merry way. And then when it came to running NIH and NIAID, He wasn't responsible for anything going on that was untoward or aberrant, as he was saying. It was Dr. Morins who was doing it all. And by the way, he's not even a senior advisor of mine. I wouldn't even call him an advisor. This is the game he's playing. He's a slippery piece of you-know-what. You arrogant, pompous prick. Who appointed you custodian of the medical profession? Dr. Fauci likes you to think he's a serious person. He's the science. He represents the science. Therefore, he has to put up this wall in front of you because you peons out there, you can't question the science because you don't know as much as him. He speaks from authority. You speak from just your lay opinions. Therefore, you are inferior to him. But when another doctor challenged him at his own level, you saw that Fauci folded like a cheap suit. Everything bad was somebody else's responsibility. But he led us through the pandemic like a champ, like the great man that he thinks he is. He's not a great man. Don't be fooled. And we all owe a debt of gratitude to Congressman Joyce, Dr. Joyce, for pointing all this out to us and for exposing that the Fauci is not wearing any medical outfit. But listen, that's just my opinion on all this. I want to know what you guys think about this particular video involving Doctor versus doctor, Dr. Joyce versus Dr. Fauci. Let's discuss it in the comments. And as always, 
like and share the show with your friends. Subscribe to the channel. Whether you're on YouTube or Rumble, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other shows. Let's talk about this together. Dr. Fauci's shenanigans and buffoonery that we just saw happen this week in Dumb Democracy. All views and opinions expressed here are not necessarily of the mainstream media and may offend some listeners. It's called political buffoonery.